Brian Hale is a certified financial planner professional for Limestone Wealth Advisors, and he's joining us again this morning as he does every week to help get our finances in order and, as always, have a bit of fun with it. So, Brian, you have led us down the path of financial planning. You've helped us figure out where we are, where we're going. You've pointed out the challenges, the pitfalls, because they're inevitable. And speaking of inevitable, you've pointed out the certainty of death and taxes, as well as the ability to have fun, not just in retirement, but on the path to retirement. So what's next? Boy, isn't that the question? Good morning once again. So after doing this for 30 years, you start to watch uh, the inevitable shape. And you're right, we, we worked on where we are now, where we're going but at some point, a lot of our clients, and, and the, the size of wealth doesn't matter, but they ask, is this all there is? Is there anything else I can do? Is there any way I can be remembered? And so I wanna spend a little, bit to, a little bit of time talking about philanthropy, not just the philosophical side and not just the financial side, but how do we mix those two together? Um, part of our mission statement at Limestone Wealth Advisors is that we want to work with people that want to live well and do good. They want to do good things. Now, that might mean for their family, for generations to come. That might mean for community. That might mean the society at large. But how do we pass on uh, those good intentions? How do we pass on our finances? How do we pass on our treasures? Um, so that's one of the things I wanted to chat about today. Now, that is so relevant because Great Day Live, and we always try to offer great ways to give back. So, I mean, like you said, as part of your mission statement, you want to work with people who want to live well, but also do good. So sure. where does that start? How can we do both? Sure, absolutely. So the easy stuff. Now, granted, tax laws have changed recently, and so helping out uh, charities just a little bit doesn't help the the gift doesn't help the grantor doesn't help the person giving the funds as much as it used to doesn't mean it doesn't help the charities so look into your heart and i have every client spend a little bit of time thinking about what's important to them uh, one particular story that comes to mind is uh, a client had some assets that they were going to leave they had no children they had no near family uh, they just didn't know where the money was going to go and we spent a good half an hour 45 minutes just brainstorming all of a sudden their cat walked across their feet underneath the kitchen table let's give it all to the uh, humane society what a great one but maybe we spend a little bit more time and try to find out what's important in our lives and where do you want to leave that mark. So there's number one. Now, when you talk to people about, I mean, we do, death and taxes, they're both inevitable. People really want to leave that legacy. And of course, you know, I mean, protecting your family, ensuring that they're going to be able to live well, that that's meaningful. But what are you seeing from your clients when you, when they know that when it's their time, People are going to remember them for how they've contributed to the world. Sure. So the Louisville metro area is just known for some fantastic nonprofit organizations. So many of them have development officers that, that can work with individuals. And you've heard me talk earlier about the team approach. And boy, did I forget to mention development officers and, and how they can work with our financial advising teams to make sure the assets go where they want them to go and in the best way. To, to get them there. So bringing in those development officers, once you found the, the organizations in your heart, then we bring in that right team. Now, we can help those organizations while the clients are still living and after they've passed away, after they've gone to the beyond. So, um, so we wanna sit down, we wanna put a plan of action. You've heard me talk about all of our retirement planning work. Well. Most certainly I wanna give money away to charity, but I still have the bills to pay and I don't know how long I'm gonna be in retirement. How do we calculate that math to see what's going to be left over? So we do a lot of financial planning with our clients to make sure of that exact reason uh, of finding out what's gonna be left over. From there, we try to find out what assets can be moved over, what's the most tax advantageous assets to be moved over and how they're gonna be used. So now you can start to see development officer, uh, certified public accountant, 
an attorney maybe for some, some charitable trust. All of that team come back together to make sure that we're making that big impact. And I think that's how Louisville's gotten to be so great. And I have a feeling that that's how they're going to be great in the decades to come because so many people in this area are so charitably and philanthropic minded. It's really been stunning talking with so many people since, you know, COVID-19 and everything that's happened. Nonprofits are hurting, but then there are also are nonprofits who are reporting people haven't stopped giving. So I'm going to put you on the spot here and ask, Brian, what are some of the different nonprofits that are near and dear to your heart? Oh, goodness. Now, you're right. That most certainly does put me on the spot. Um, we have a number of, uh, of organizations that we work with. We have a number of organizations that our clients work with. Uh, link, uh, listing out a, a list of them, uh, <laughs> I have a feeling I would leave somebody out, which I would hate to do. And in addition, that might be improper from a confidentiality standpoint. Um, I will. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to pass on that answer. I can't go there. Uh, and I'm I'm with you. I mean, on so many, but I, in general, for, for like for me, I mean, a, a lot of our viewers know I'm an animal lover. And now, ever since having a child, I mean, I have a heart for kids as well. I mean, but we have nonprofits that run the gamut. Yes, we do. And I will tell you this because because I love the way you said that. So I'll say something as well. Limestone Wealth Advisors most certainly has a passion for financial education. Uh, education as a whole, we want to see the next generation grow. And we want to see them grow not just in, in uh, math and history and science, but we also want them to see how they can grow um, and learn about the things they need, specifically financial education. Now, we also have a great heart for widows and orphans and, uh, and do everything we can to make sure that those particular groups are, are well cared for, not only in a financial respect, but also just in a, a relationship. So we spend a lot of time working with those, those individuals. Absolutely. And, and I mean, philanthropy is so important, but if you don't mind, I just want to bring this up. You brought up a great topic, financial literacy. It's not something that valued, it seems, society as much as of many of us would like it to because it's imperative. Do you think at some point we could discuss that topic here on Great Day Live? You know, I would love to do that. We, we want to talk a little bit more about what that age group uh, knows and what they don't know and what should they know. And then how young do you start Right. We have we have clients that they're starting with the budgeting aspect and the net worth building aspect as young as four or five years old. It doesn't make any difference how much money they have or don't have, but get them into those habits. Let's spend an entire segment on that. I would love to talk more about that. Now, let me tell one more story um, when we're talking about philanthropy, because I always know I, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. But here's a story. You've got your average churchgoer, and that average churchgoer has been uh, giving money into the passing of the plate for decades. That's what they do. That's what their parents did. That's what their grandparents did. And so they dig deep into their pocket and they lay cash in there. Well, now this particular individual is over the age of 70 and a half, and they've built up a very nice retirement plan, a 401k, an IRA, all of that. And that money has been growing and hadn't been paying taxes on during that entire period. The IRS has now said that after the age of 70 and a half, if you choose, you can take a portion of your IRA and send it directly to the charity of your choice. It has to be a licensed charity in, in the eyes of the law, but you can send it directly to a charity and you don't have to pay the taxes on it anymore. Now, obviously check with your tax advisor. There's a lot more information to be had there, but think about this. I've got clients that are pulling money out of their IRA, paying taxes on it, then putting it in the plate at, uh, at their favorite charity. But now we have a chance to take the money out of the IRA, not pay a dime of taxes on it and get it to the same place. I can't tell you that there's not a charity in Metro Louisville that wouldn't want everybody to know about that concept. Now, granted, it's only beneficial to people over the age of 70 and a half. Don't ask me why the half. But over 70 and a half, you can do that. And what a great benefit that would be to the population at large. 
That is good information. That's something that I didn't know. And there was a time when 70 and a half seemed so far away. It doesn't seem far away at all. No, it's the youth of today. I guarantee you that. Sure. Well, as always, Brian, thank you so much for making sense of financial sense for sure. Thank you. Connect with certified financial planner professional Brian Hale and Limestone Wealth Advisors, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, by calling 502-894-9366 or visit limestonewealthadvisors.com.